Hello, my name is Jared Isbell, and today I'm going to show you how to install Slackware Linux. Slackware is one of the oldest Linux distributions dating back to 1993. It was created by Patrick Volkerding. Slackware is a solid and stable Linux distribution that can appear to be daunting, but once properly configured, can outlast the competition. We're going to begin with the system boot up and loading of the kernel, after which we will configure the system's hard disk, swap memory, distribution packages, network configuration, bootloader, and everything in between. Please follow along in the video as we progress through the installation. First, we are going to load our DVD into the DVD-ROM player and boot up the system. We will come to a text display that asks if we want to enter any special parameters or if we just want to load the default kernel. Press the Enter key to load the default kernel without any special parameters. We will receive a prompt to select the keyboard mapping. If you are using a standard US keyboard, just press Enter. After a brief second, you will arrive at the login screen. You will want to log in as root. So just type the letters R-O-O-T and press enter. There are a few things we must complete before beginning the setup portion of the install. First, we must configure the hard drive to use a Linux recognized file system. Type CF disk and press enter. You should now see a pseudo graphic screen that displays the size and partitions on your first hard drive. Navigate the highlighted cursor to new and press enter. We will want to set up this partition to be a primary partition. So select primary and press enter. Now we are going to use 100% of the disk space for our Linux install. So when you're prompted to, to enter a size, just press enter to accept the default amount. We will now need to make this Linux partition bootable. So select bootable and press the enter key. You should now see that we've established a primary partition named SDA1. It is bootable and the file system is set to Linux and the size is 20 gigabytes. Navigate to write and press the enter key. You will be asked if you want to write the partition table to disk. The correct answer is yes. You have now written the partition table to the disk and can quit by selecting quit and hitting the enter key. We will now continue to the setup portion. At the root command line, type setup and press enter. You will now find yourself at another pseudo graphic screen where we will navigate to target, set up your target partitions. Press enter. You will be asked about where you want to place your root file system. Since we only have a single partition, we will select slash dev slash sda1 and press the enter key. Now we will be asked if we want to install, if we want the installer to perform a format of the hard drive. You will want to select the quick format with no bad block checking and press enter. The following menu asks you what type of Linux file system to use. I prefer the ext4 file system. So navigate down to ext4 and press enter. After a few moments you should be able to see a display that tells you that slash dev slash sda1 has been added to your slash etc slash fs tab file. These files might seem confusing for now, but if you ever want to know more about them, feel free to do an internet search to find more information. Press the enter key to move on. We are now going to tell the installer what media to use to install the software packages. Assuming you are using a CD-ROM or DVD, just press the enter key to select option 1. Do an auto scan to find your optical media drivers by selecting auto and pressing enter a second time. After a few seconds, you should see a package selection menu. An asterisk means that the package will be installed. The default options are more than enough to get the system working and usable. So just press enter here. At the next menu, install everything by selecting the full option and pressing enter. This process will take some time, so this makes a perfect opportunity to explain why we configured the system to have a 20 gigabyte hard drive. The installation packages and software alone can take up to 6.5 gigabytes of space. So it's important to have enough space that you need so you can make the system usable for yourself with movies, music, and other important files. You will now be given the option of creating a USB boot disk for your Slackware installation. 
You have the option of doing this at another time, so skip it for now. Follow along in the video as I direct you through the following settings to configure the Linux loader, also known as Lilo. We now move on to configuring your mouse driver. If you're using a standard USB mouse, you can select USB mouse at the mouse selection. Otherwise, find the correct mouse driver and enter that driver to use it. Now you will be asked if you want to configure your network. Select yes and press enter. First, you will be asked to name your machine. Once you've decided on your host name, type it in and press enter. Now you will be asked for the domain name of the machine. Enter something simple here like workgroup.com or family.com. Next, tell the network controller that you want that you will be using that you will be connecting via DHCP. Unless you want to use a static IP address, this is the easiest and quickest choice to make. Unless your ISP requires to use the host name, leave the next menu field empty and press enter. You will now be asked if the configuration looks correct. If it is, select yes and hold and press the enter key. The startup services menu allows you to, config to configure your Slackware machine to perform server level functions such as web services, FTP services, domain name services, DHCP, and etc. The default selections here are safe to use and still allow you to do everything your standard window machine would allow. Select OK and press enter. Select no when asked if you want to use custom screen fonts. Select no at the hardware clock menu and set your region to whatever time zone you reside in. The default window manager for X will allow you to choose what X windows manager you wish to use. This is a purely personal choice and you can change it later on should you choose to use something else. You will now be asked to enter a root password. The root user is the most powerful user on a Linux computer. Root can perform any task, delete any file, start any service, etc. Using the root account for normal day-to-day -day operations is very dangerous, and a mistyped key can cause you to have to completely rebuild your system. Choose a strong password for all of your Linux machines, and only use the root account for system administration jobs. Then log out of root as soon as you are done. You should now see a screen that tells you you are done configuring and installation is complete. Press OK and reboot your system ensuring that you remove the optical media you used to boot it up. Congratulations, you've successfully configured your Slackware machine and are ready to do anything you would want. Linux has come a long way in 20 years and there is nothing that you can't do on a Windows machine that you can't do on Linux. You can find answers to basic Linux questions at www linuxquestions.org or do a search on a specific problem to get assistance. Linux users are for the most part friendly and helpful as long as you're willing to do some of your own research to fix a problem. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and I hope you enjoy Linux even more. Have a wonderful day.